So we're going to talk about the proteins that are involved in complement regulation. Okay, so the regulation of complement, first of all, it's really labile in nature. So it's, that just means it's easily broken down. So that nature of many of the complement components ensures that only appropriate targets, such as invading microbes, are attacked by the complement system. So remember our C3B grenade that we talked about in the alternative pathway. It has 60 seconds to find a target before it's degraded by water, okay? Also, the complement system is subject to regulation both before and after the assembly of C3 convertase. So remember C4B2A and C3BBB, as well as the terminal stage of the membrane attack complex assembly. So it's, there's regulatory factors everywhere, which I'm going to talk about right now. So the first one is C1 inhibitor. So it is involved in fluid phase regulation. So I'm just going to put fluid FP for fluid phase. It affects the classical and lectin pathway. So remember C1 in, uh, inhibitor is involved right at the beginning of the classical pathway. So classical lectin pathway. Now the function of it is to induce dissociation and inhibition of the C1R2S2 from C1Q, which is the serine protease inhibitor. So induce dissociation of C1R2S2 from C1Q. Next on our list is what's called the decay accelerating factor, otherwise known as CD55. So it is membrane bound, membrane bound. It affects the all three pathways. So classical, alternative, and lectin. And what it does is it accelerates the dissociation of C4B2A and C3BBB convertases. So increases or quickens, accelerates, quickens, quickens, break down of C3 convertases, right? So if you cannot activate your C3 convertases, right? So if your C3 convertases cannot, can no longer cut C3B or C3 into C3B and C3A, you're not going to have any more of these C3 convertases forming, and then all of these are going to dissociate, right? Next, we have factor H. So I'm not going to touch on all of them. There are more than the ones that I'm going to talk about in this list. These are just the most important ones that I've learned. So factor H is soluble. Soluble. It affects, affects only the alternative pathway. And what it does is it blocks formation or it accelerates the dissociation of the C4B2A C3 convertase. Or sorry, the C3BBB convertase, right? Because this is the alternative pathway. So blocks slash speeds up break down of C3BBB which is one of the C3 convertases, right? Next we have factor I, which is also soluble, but it affects all three pathways. Okay, now what it does is it's a serine protease. Okay, so serine protease. What it does is it cleaves C4B and C3B, C4B, C3B, using the cofactors, um, using the uh, cofactors MCP, CR1, factor H, um, or C4BP, okay? So those are factors that you might want to know. I want to mention that this 
chart or this information that I'm using is from the QB immunology text, which I highly recommend you get. That's QB immunology, and this is from the seventh, uh, yeah, the seventh edition that I'm using this from. So obviously, all the information that I use in any of my videos is not my own, but I just wanted to uh, make a plug for them. So this is table six point four in the seventh edition. Um, so it is it is a really really good book. So these regulatory uh, factors or the um, cofactors that are used here are shown in a different figure on figure 6.16. So I would encourage you to read that. But this is more of just a summary once again for those of you who are studying. Um, I took this class a few years ago. I use this now in my research. So this is, uh, it is a really good book and I use it all the time. So I highly recommend it. The next one is protectin, which is otherwise known as CD59, and it is membrane bound, so much like the decay accelerating factor. Membrane bound, it affects all three pathways. And what it does is it binds C5B678, so remember that's uh, involved in the polymerization of C9. So this would be your pre mac attacks complex regulation right here. So you're protecting from protectin from, uh, from mac attack complex. So it'll block the binding of C9. So it um, binds C5B678 and then blocks C9 formation, or C9, which will block MAC formation. The last one I'm going to talk about are the carboxypeptidases, NB and R, which are, once again, all, what color should I do this in? Um, yellow. So these are soluble. I can't really see that. Uh, Soluble, it affects um, the anaphylatoxins produced by all pathways, and I'm going to talk about talk about what these are. But anaphylatoxins, all three pathways, and what it does is it cleaves and inactivates the anaphylatoxins C3A and C5A. So cuts C3A, C5A. So those are the regulatory factors that I'm going to talk about here. So you have something like protectin, which is the inhibition of lysis. You have the factor 1, factor I, cofactor uh, co activity with different proteins involved in regulating the cleavage of C4B and C3B, which would obviously prevent C3 convertase from forming. You have factor H, which is obviously involved in the breakdown or the blockage completely of C3 convertase for the alternative pathway. You have decay accelerating factor, which is in all three pathways, speeds up the breakdown of C3 convertases for both, obviously, because it's for all three. So C4B, uh, the convertase for C4B and C3B, and then you have C1 inhibitor, which is involved in the classical and lectin pathway, which induces the dissociation of C1, R2, S2 from C1Q.